God, thanks for giving us this day to live and work in the community. Please be with the city council as they consider the needs of the community. Bless us as we live and work together. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. See you. Additions to the agenda. Some uh, come up here, Steve, come here. Um, when we did the uh, redoing of our insurance with EMC, um, they because we've allowed shooting range to be uh, essentially open to the public with membership, they raised our insurance on the shooting range about fifteen hundred dollars a year, John. It's seven hundred twenty-eight. Okay, seven hundred twenty-eight dollars a year. Um, so I just wanted to get your guys' input on that. I mean, that's a that's a pretty good chunk of change. Um, we don't. We charge ten dollars a year for the memberships, and we don't have near, you know, that many memberships um, to cover that. So, how many memberships do you have? Oh, I mean, active that actually use it probably about twenty. Okay. Um, I mean, it's a neat benefit for the public to have a place to, to go out and use it, um, but at the same time, we're going to think about if that's a good way to spend the uh, the budget with there being. You know, basically five hundred dollars to cover. So, 
policy. It's a UFC. So I don't. I mean, it, it, the only right way we could do it is if we maybe helped with the cost of membership. Um, you know, we probably have to do it two hundred fifty bucks a year, which is still for a membership with a shooting range is still pretty cheap. Um, or we just have the option to just cover it. We need that as a as kind of a benefit or public relations kind of thing that you still provide the citizens. I think maybe it's a good idea to raise it. Maybe just not right away, you know. Just, but I also think it's a pretty good deal for people in the city. So I mean, Do you maybe we ought to think about raising it. But maybe you know, next year or whatever. I don't know when they come to. When do they come? Uh, to? It's it's on a year. I mean, it, we don't do it like if somebody were to come in and fill out an application today, um, they pay their ten bucks and they'll be a do again that next year. It's, it's a rip or something. Or what? Yeah, no, it's up to them. Yeah. I mean, they're the, the, the majority of the, the ones that use it. Um, are very good about coming in and paying, um, and then we keep an eye on it too. And, and once they, you know, they get past, we get hold of them and tell them if we want to continue to use it. Um, and dispatch helps us too because they have a, a list of everybody that's approved, and it has the date that their membership is, membership is active. So they have to go sign in. So then the dispatcher will tell them, you know, you're past and you need to pay ten dollars. You have a dollar, like a no. I figured I don't have an idea, but. I I mean, yeah, maybe it ought to be raised. But you know, said, I don't think it's really fair to just say your dues just went up because of well, no, yeah, today. I mean, yeah, but I mean, it's just pick a date and we can come up with that dollar amount or ask around, and see what other cities are doing. I, to be honest, I don't think a lot of the cities do that. It's uh, uh -huh. never heard of a city. It's, it's pretty city uncommon. Actually. Really? I would, uh, I would think. Or at least do it $25 right now. And then if that's not enough to cover the insurance, do it another $25 a year. I mean, I don't see a problem. $50 or $100 a year. Solana is just $130 a year. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we could do it progressive until we kind of see it where we're kind of starting to even out. But, then, but yeah, I mean, you know, we've used it for concealed carry classes and stuff like that. So. Right. I, I think do it's you a charge good the, when you do a concealed carry class? Do you charge? Is there a certain part of that money that's done? Go do that. No, that's just another thing that you know there isn't. Some people that have been traveling an hour, two hours to do that. Um, the, I think there was a, I think there was a ten dollar charge to use the range, range and post it. And I but that's something we could do. It's, you know, we could just ask the ones that are using the unit just for the class to go ahead and get a membership. Um, the other thing is, um, as some of you know, we, we try to, we've, uh, we're part of the, uh, they call it the Lisa program, 233 program, where we have the opportunity to get better this property at a discounted rate. Um, they have um, some Glock 17 pistols. Um, that they have released now, and we've been trying for a while to keep an eye out to see um, a good opportunity to get some backups. Um, we can get them right now for uh, $50 a piece. Um, so I would like to, I mean, it's, it's within my purchasing authority, but I still, anytime when it comes to my firearms and stuff like that, I think that's something you guys need to have an input on. Um, but I would like to purchase four of them, um, like I said, as, as, as backups. And, um, we shoot a 40 caliber right now, the box 17 is a 9 millimeter. Um, so that would also give officers the opportunity to, you know, some officers shoot a, a smaller caliber weapon a little bit better than, than a 40. So that would give us some, some opportunities. We wouldn't have to buy the 17s and 22s all fit in the same holster, same bag packers, all that. So we wouldn't have any more cost on it. Are these new guns? They're used. They've been reconditioned or whatever? They, but yeah, when, when the, when the Military gets them back. They go through. They clean them. They make sure everything's in, in working. How many are you looking at? Four. Yeah. Are you using for target practice and more so? Than well, no. The, the biggest thing we would be using for is backups. Um, you know, if we're got for a bit an officer gets involved in a shooting or something. 
we have to take that firearm and it stays in evidence. Um, and we don't have anything to give them back to work with. Um, but again, the other thing would be give the officers the chance to, to pick what they want to carry. Um, and if they, carry, if they choose to carry the 9mm, which we got a couple of us that are probably going to, then that uh, those rounds are about $5 cheaper a box. So we'll see a little bit of cost savings when it comes time to make it. So if they choose to carry that, then you're going to put the 40 somewhere up on the rocket field. Yep. Yeah. So they are city property. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and essentially. They will be city property too. They will be, um, you pay a transfer fee. So technically, they still belong to the government, um, but you know we just have to maintain them, uh, provide an inventory. They come every year and check, make sure we still got them, um, and that kind of thing. They can theoretically they can be recalled by the government, but that's never happened. Okay. The only other thing I got is an update on the, uh, the car. Um, it was done Friday. Um, and then had to go to the body shop Monday because there is a some kind of a light rack that they hang over uh, either over the car or on the side of the car, something to shine light into it so you can see when they're putting all the equipment in and when their employees should have gone on and put a crease in it. So uh, they paid for that. They went to the body shop and they, they said it should be done for it. Hopefully. Here, the insurance uh, as of yesterday has sent all the payment for the vehicle they picked up the ground vehicle so with the exception of getting it back all that will be finally complete that's all i got yeah. chief sanders i don't have anything um independence day falls on the saturday this year so uh, i just want to make sure that it's it is a holiday for the employees, so we would do it on Friday or Monday. Normally, we would do it the one closest, so in this case, it would be Friday.
did you ever check and find out if, I mean, did, were we going through with one company to come in and do that? Well, I, I reported last time that uh, Dave Turner from Stafford, there's some playground equipment that they're putting in over there, and he was going to get back with me. I called him, and uh, he's actually in Colorado right now, and he still has not installed the playground equipment in Stafford. Okay. He said that had someone else fine, but he, he wasn't going to commit himself until he got that money. Okay. He's going to do it, maybe some volunteers are going to help him or whatever. So the only other alternative we have is to try the company. You know, it's the date they gave us was in August 15th or whatever it was. Until we sign up, you know, that time we take a look. So he's, he hasn't given himself time to well, I know I'd, I'd said something to Jeff because I know they don't work a lot in the afternoons because of the, the hot weather and shut people off. And I asked them if it was something they could at least start on. You know, the line electric department, they've got bigger trucks to do holes and stuff. I mean, Jeff didn't see a problem with him and his employees when it's too hot to be doing line work to go out and start doing it. Put some of that equipment in. I don't think that's up to the council. I mean, it's going to save us some money. We're spending money, and I mean, if they, we got to hire someone. But I mean, right now we don't have. Well, they have Tom Hanger probably as well. Yeah, we'll do it. At least get started on it. I mean, we're looking at August before that other. Well, first, we got to sign up for that. Too. Right. But, It would be a great idea if they want to do that. You said you what, had 10, 12 days of line work to do and you'd be kind of... Yeah, as soon as we get this wire pulled in, the load's getting heavy enough we can't tie it together. It's too much load to try and pull a switch. And because the circuit that we're working on feeds the courthouse and the school and all the east part of downtown, and the load just gets too heavy to try and tie together. Um, so I thought at that time, you know, that that would give us some time that if we had laid out and we knew where, where things were going to go, well, I don't see a problem with, you know, us getting part of it set up and, and kind of getting a, a, a layout of where everything goes, you know, and, and I think we can kind of work together and get it done and save the city seven or $8,000 in the process. So uh, did any of that stuff come with a layout of any type? Yeah, we got plans here. We got plans and everything, so. I don't see anything wrong with it. Great idea. I'd say. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
what's the set up What's the difference in the estimate? Well, actually, I just got this one uh, last night or like yesterday evening. We were had a water leak today, so I haven't really a chance to look at it. Some of them may be over what you know, they really want to do, but I honestly just got this and haven't had a chance to look at it. So we can just go with whoever. If you don't have someone else that you would rather use, we can just go with whoever's you know, a good number with the insurance company. We don't necessarily need to give it to one person, but one may be high on one roof and one on the other, so just whatever you guys want to try for. I don't have a preference. I just I don't want to get it done. I did have, I know we'll take this back on the AR, we did get, before we had any of this hail damage, uh, you guys came through and said that these are, they were mainly looked at or like our wood center and the flat roof we have here and on the west shop over there, and I told them, you know, we really need to look at getting some maintenance done on it, and the next thing you know, they get on So I do have a price on them on some of the, the other uh, flat roofs and stuff like that. So uh, just compare them and get started with whoever you don't have a preference. I don't know what has a land, land rear, land rear, land rear. He gets to me, he did mine too. I'd say whoever we can make with the work with the numbers is that what you want to do. If one of these guys is higher than the insurance company's, you know, estimate, and the other one's lower, we'll just go with that and say, well, that's what we're going to do. That's all I have. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We've got a, I had a party talk to me today about cycling. People were at least a week. Cleaned up a, uh, a lot here in town, and he wanted to take the sidewalk. And he was told to he took it out, he had to put it back. And then he brought to my attention that another person, party here in town, had took out a sidewalk and planted grass on it. And he said that if what if that's fair, then he wanted to take the sidewalk out. So I'm just going to ask the council, how do we handle it? What what is the the difference is the one person in the discussion I talked to and the other person, people just did it. You know, they just tore it out and laid it down. So it's been, it's really not a, a you know, the council is aware of what we were doing the other way I've set up as far as if, if someone, uh, a lot of people just want to take a sidewalk out because they don't want a sidewalk. Some of them are bad, you know, this, this particular one was all grown with grass and it was bad underneath. But you guys may want to change the policy, do something different. Uh, the party that took the sidewalk out, I talked to him today and said if council wants to put the sidewalk back in, they would. But if you don't, if you want to take the position that you know, if the sidewalk's beyond repair, they can take it out. That's up to you guys. So, but we want to be. The sidewalks already going in this one. Yes, there was. Or does it just dead in? It's kind of a, a weird setup the way it is, but there is a sidewalk that goes, it tees into another sidewalk, so it did, it did join up, so. I agree. I got into this deal about 15 years ago, 12 years ago, and I went to Oscar and there's a piece of sidewalk in front of it and all the parking, about 100 feet long, don't do nobody no good, and I want to take it out and it's all broke up. We have to put it back in the I think you ought to change the room. Especially if any houses it's getting torn down and cleaned up, you know. My question. And most of the sidewalks are junk. There's one right over here to where the old motel was. East of the I'm not going to put it in. I thought there was something in the city code that said that if you had a sidewalk and you took it out, you did have to. Well, I, don't, I don't know if there's anything in the code. I, I'll, I'll stand corrected. It, it's in there about that you know they're responsible, you know, property owner who is responsible for the repair. I think that's what I've read that it was that they're yeah. responsible yeah. for the repair of it. And there's a policy even before I came here that if, if someone wanted to put in a new sidewalk, the city would tear it out for free if they would you know, help on the cost to get a new sidewalk put in. So we can research that a little bit better before we change anything, but uh, you know, I guess 
folks, I guess we need to look at the policy and see what it says. It's actually in the city. But you guys can make a policy on that. I mean, that wouldn't change, you know, as far as the homeowner being responsible for repair. I mean, you could give someone, you could do a case by case, go out and look at it, see how bad it is. You know, some places you may have two or three busted up side pieces, you know, and those could be repaired rather than taking the whole sidewalk down. You know, but, you know we've got admittedly four sidewalks. A lot of areas don't have any, but if, if you got a sidewalk, my kind of judgment has been if there's a sidewalk going through an area or connecting to another sidewalk, try and leave it in there if at all possible. But once you take it out, the chances are it'll never be back. But if it's a hazard, maybe they're better off now. So. You know, another way to look at that might be something to do with, if you do a cost share with the city with the resident, you know, maybe split the cost of the sidewalk. People might get antagonized to maybe put a sidewalk back in. But for them to, you just mandate them to, if you take it out, you got to put it back in, and you're not going to get no new sidewalks at all. As the council requested the other day, I went to Stafford today and visited with the city clerk a while and uh, about the automated meter reading. And and Jamie kind of showed me the figures of kind of what they have invested. She told me that uh, they use they use the Itron and the Badger setup, which I think most of us knew, and they've had no trouble whatsoever at downloading it and getting it to come right into uh, into the computer and, and doing what they had what they had been told it would do. Uh, Pratt, one, somebody from Pratt was up yesterday, they read yesterday, same time we did, and uh, and so us being shorthanded, I didn't leave and go over uh, for this run, but they asked me to come over on the 14th of next month and ride with the guy. It takes about, uh, they, use, they use the handhelds plus also uh, the handhelds will, uh, they have one, they have the small handheld that will radio read without having it punched in and it takes about 40 minutes she said to make the route and uh, with what they have all their electric meters are done uh, about 30 percent of their water meters are done and they're in the process of changing the rest of them and and I think probably by uh, next time of course it probably it'll be the second meeting probably before I can give you an answer as to uh, you know what I find out on that but Maybe by then we can kind of get a little closer estimate of how many meters we're looking at to purchase and, and that. But she showed me a purchase sheet, and the purchase sheet she had was about a year old. She said they'd gone up about four dollars since then. But the uh, the five eight three quarter meters water meters were costing about uh, one hundred twenty dollars. Uh, the one inch meters were costing about two hundred twenty dollars, and the two inch about six hundred. So. She total investment on the water of what she showed me was about 125,000, which covers over 90 percent of the meters that they've changed out. So uh, it might not be quite as expensive as what we had first thought it would be. So and they're and they're basically within just a few meters of having the same amount of meters that we did, water and electric both. So we know fairly close what the what uh, electric meters we need, but. We can get a little time, we get a rainy day, we might pull the meter books and kind of go back through and see how many uh, radio electric meters we've already changed. And I can give you a little closer idea of what we have left to do there. And maybe even sit down while we got the books open and, and kind of help uh, the water guys out a little bit and kind of take account as to how many of each size of water meters in there too, you know. So we'll, we'll play the weather and see what happens and maybe uh, by second meeting next month I can give you a a little better answer, but I look forward to uh, uh, to doing that next month. Jamie did tell me that they had went out and pulled a meter uh, the other day. Uh, for some reason or another, they went to test it or something. And when the reading, when they picked up the readings on Monday, 
it showed that meter had been tampered with. So if they get removed, then it will throw a red flag on that computer and show that it has been tampered with. So, uh, you know, of course, the more advanced you get with them, why the more things they'll do for you. But, but just basically, that's a that's a pretty good signal right there. You know, of, of something that will help you. But she said it looks like the revenue. Uh, is going to increase about three to four percent, at least right now. She said, "Of course, the weather's been so much different than it was a year ago. You know, without seeing a year or two's readings, that they're really not going to be able to tell how much revenue is coming up." So, anyway, that's about all I can tell you about that for right now. Anyway, maybe I'll have more next month. But that's all I have. Alright, your solid waste code, I don't know if this is by accident or if it's done on purpose, is written so that um, if somebody chose, they could cancel their city trash because the code allows them to call the trash uh, for its disposal on its own. By law, you have, if you want to charge everybody city trash, you have to have an ordinance that prohibits the carrying of trash on city streets. So uh, this, is, this has come up recently with somebody wanting to cancel their garbage. Um, so if it's the city's intention to divide, and I don't remember since it happened so long ago what the contract is with the, the, uh, the entity providing the trash service, but if it's the city's intention to uh, require everybody to pay a uh, share of uh, that contract through trash service, then So the question is, is do we want to change the ordinance so that everyone has to have trash service or I would think we need to make you said the the contract that like Stafford County Trash Service. I've seen, and I don't remember who your provider is, but I've, for instance, I've seen Nines League contracts, which where the city, smaller cities, will sign a guarantee. Basically, we're going to provide this many customers. And so, in order to, to reach that, they pass an ordinance that says that in order to ensure that our city streets remain clean, we're prohibiting anybody but somebody who's contracted to pick up trash from carrying garbage on the city streets. Which means that you can't take to the landfill your own garbage, which means you generate garbage. Um, right now, uh, 15506 allows anybody to remove uh, their trash as long as they're not hauling uh, trash that's not their own. Can you check into that contract and make sure how it's read with our provider? Yeah, sure. thank you. It was probably the member that it was somewhere. Okay. The last time we were in March, was it that one? March of this year? I don't remember. It's guaranteed me. You're not a lot here,
now, and, and John can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, if, if the council group, well, there's some <coughs> certain people agreements have been worked out with in the past and they're making agreements on those, those plans. But um, if somebody comes in and says, I can have the rest of it in three days, um, staff, do you have a form that they fill out? Or? Yeah, um, and that came about because I was the hearing officer. So, you know, we could <coughs> do that at, when they came in and requested it. Now, it would be different. And, and well, my suggestion is, I guess if, if the city wants to give staff the opportunity to work out those kinds of payment plans, it, it becomes a little, I guess, confusing, convoluted, and essentially puts a lot of pressure on city staff, or, or maybe responsibility that either the council doesn't want them to undertake, or. Uh, then you may have an issue where somebody gets a more preferred payment plan over somebody else, and then uh, whether they, the city looks bad, depending on how those payment plans are arranged. Um, I don't know if you want to deal with that kind of fallback. My thought is if you just let it go through the system and actually go through the hearing process, that provides them sufficient time to make that payment if you're talking about somebody who's, who's only needing three additional days. Otherwise, you may have a situation where they just set up on a payment plan, and then by that time, the next month kicks in, and that's when you start to see accumulated, repeated months of past utility payments. And that's when it starts to be I mean, to be candid, I've never seen the kind of problem you guys have with collection of tools. Well, I'd like to get up here myself, so I don't know how to do it. The ordinance is drafted. The ordinance just needs to be followed. I think what you just say is from now on, if you're behind on utilities, you, you have to go through the process. You'll get a notice in the mail, call our office, set up a hearing. They get a notice in the mail, which is their delinquent card. On the card, it does say that you can request a hearing. Um, when it was set up that the clerk was the hearing officer, they could come in the door and we would discuss it and try to figure out a way. Um, so now the mayor's the hearing officer. We're going to have to figure out how. I mean, it's just a matter of logistics, I guess.
which is her code. Um, but in that letter, it does state what the cost is to have what it will be charged, and mm -hmm. that there's a minimum. And there is a minimum. What's the minimum? You know, one hour to one hour. One hour minute. Well, I guess the question I would have is why would they, why would they charge somebody two hours if it only takes 40 minutes for the end of the week to go? And that, I don't know if it is happening or if it isn't. We go by what is turned in by the contractor. By the contractor. But in all fairness, as far as if, if they go and keep it up, it may only take 40 minutes, but they let it get to the 9 inches and then we send the letters out. That, and there's another 10 days for them to get that. And by then, it's, it's really tough mowing. Maybe on a regular mow, it might be 40 minutes, but you know, on a, on a, you know, trimming it and everything. So that, that may be the answer. So. Well, I know one of them was, it was an alleyway and it was nothing more than weeds growing up in the cracks. So. I looked at it and they could have taken more than five minutes to take the weed eaters and knock them down. The guy had already sprayed them to kill them. He just hadn't made it out to cut them down and you got to bill for a hundred dollars. Like I said, this was a hundred dollars per I mean, I, I think five minutes worth of work. But I understand we done the contract for a minimum, but I don't know if we can really do anything to change that. But at this point, I would say next year we need to look at possibly even hire extra part-time people in the summer and having the city actually mow it and send the bill instead of contracting it out. I mean, because we're paying somebody $70 an hour when we could be making $50 an hour, it cost us $9 and make money instead of spend money and sit on the bill because, I mean, if we don't get paid for it, it just goes on tax rate. Never, if they never pay the taxes, it would be paid for it so we're out of the money. I'd rather have something invested in it than give that money. Because I know most people charge $35, maybe $45 an hour to know. So I mean, it's kind of high. I think our old contract is $50 or $55. It's it's $65. Your poor bills were $65. This year we only had one contract. Right. And if the council wants to revisit this before next year, you could even do something where you've got a potential violator part of your code where it says, okay, the first time you have any on vacation or something, because the second time, this is your fine. You know, if you become a repeat offender, you're going to start getting that. That way, you're not going to have the situation where it's kind of long.
Sorry. I was reading it wrong. It looks good to me.